Hello everyone, Charles Watts here, the Arsenal correspondent at Goal, joining you for the latest one of my videos. Apologies, once again, I said this last week, but I'm going to do it again. Apologies for not being able to do too many videos this week. I think this is my first one since the Fulham game and the player ratings after the 3-0 the win at the weekend, but it's just been a very hectic week, as I'm sure you're aware with Arsenal. We've had a Bamiyang sign-in yesterday, finally that being confirmed. I'll get to that later on in this video. We've had Emi Martinez today, and have plenty else going on. Um, to do as well this week, so it's been really difficult to find the uh, find the time to get these uh, to get one of these videos done. But I've made about a 15 minute space in my diary to do it t today, and I have put out a tweet on Twitter as well this morning. If you haven't seen it, head over to it. I've said I'm going to try and record a Q and A in the next few days, um, and to reply to that tweet with your questions or comments or Arsenal opinions that you may have. So please do head over to my Twitter at Charles underscore Watts and reply to that to get involved in my Q&A, which I'll try and record over the next couple of days. And thank you once again for all your support on this channel. And if you haven't yet, please do hit the subscription uh, button. It's down there somewhere, and I'll try and keep you as updated as I can with uh, all the latest Arsenal news and opinions. Right, let's go straight into this video then, because we've got a fair amount to, to uh, cover. Let's start with the big news from yesterday, the news we'd all been waiting a long, long time to hear that Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang's new contract has been confirmed. We know it's been done for a while. while. We've just been waiting for that announcement. It finally came yesterday in big Arsenal style. The Instagram live from the Emirates Stadium that I know hundreds of thousand people logged on to certainly got, gave Arsenal the reach they would have wanted. Um, I thought the videos they put out were great as well. The video interviews with Wrighty the, on, that went on YouTube, that sort of 10, 11 minute clip, I thought was fantastic. Um, I thought his video as well when he was talking about becoming a legend and writing a legacy uh, also was fantastic. So just great news for Arsenal that Aubameyang has um, has signed. Um, I think you, you kind of look at I've seen a, a fair few rival fans on Twitter being having a bit of a go today saying a oh, similar situation to Mesut Ozil, 31, putting in loads, you know, giving him 350 grand a week potentially, uh, which is not that much anyway. It's a, it goes up to that with you know possible instalments and bonuses and stuff like that. From what I understand, it's a lot more closer to two hundred and fifty grand a week, basic for for Pierre. But um, you know, you look at it. He's thirty one years old. Who cares about how old he is? Pierre. He's in the best form he's he's been at it since he's been at Arsenal. Since he's arrived, he scored um, seventy two goals in a hundred and eleven games. No one has scored more goals than Aubameyang since he arrived in England. Um, in the top flight. Salah's got 71, so he's one ahead of Salah in all competitions. Kane's got 59, that shows how good Aubameyang has been. He's been doing it all in a very underachieving Arsenal team as well, uh, which makes it even more impressive. So I don't buy into any of the people, any of the rival fans who are having, having a go at this deal. Arsenal had to sign Aubameyang to a new contract. It was absolutely essential. They could not afford to lose him. Can you imagine where they would be now if they were having to try and replace someone like Aubameyang. It would have set Arteta back so much, um, but now he can build his team around one of Europe's most prolific strikers who basically doesn't miss a game, even though he's 31, barely misses a game, always fit, always available, um, does so much for the team, he's captain, it was just a deal Arsenal had to do and they've got it done. And it's three more, you know, I absolutely think in three more, Three years' time, Aubameyang is still going to be at a very, very high level. He's not someone who's going to suddenly nosedive. I just don't see it. He's too fit. Um, he's just... Look at Ian Wright. When Ian Wright was in, in his mid-30s, he was still fantastic for Arsenal. And I just see Aubameyang being that sort of player. I really do. So I think it was a, it's a perfect deal for Arsenal. Um, one they had to do and one they have done. And it's massive for Arsenal. It's massive for the fans. It's massive for Arteta. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think we can all celebrate it. Uh, Aubameyang is staying and we're going to be seeing him play and score plenty more goals for Arsenal. He's on 78 goals now for Arsenal. No, 72 goals, sorry, now for Arsenal. He's only got 28 more to get before he gets to 100 mark, which you'd think he's got a very good chance of doing this season by the rate that he's been scoring since he's joined here. And then that already puts him towards the list of legends. I loved his interview he did yesterday where he talked about wanting to stay to write a legacy and to join the likes of Wright E, Thierry, Tony Adams, Dennis Bergkamp, and write his name into Arsenal history. He's now got a very, very good chance of that. If, if he stays fit over the next three years, he's going to get towards the 150 goal mark for Arsenal. Not many people have done that. He's going to be right up towards the top five of all time Arsenal goal scorers. Um, and then you're in a very good, you know, you're, you're basically writing yourself into Arsenal history then. So many times we've watched people go Van Persie, Fabregas, Nasri, um, 
and uh, go elsewhere for cut price deals and basically force their way out of the club. But no one would have really blamed Aubameyang for doing that, considering the mess Arsenal have been in really since he's joined. But he hasn't. He's stuck around. He's bought into Arteta and the rebuild. And uh, he's well on his way to legendary status now. So fair play, Pierre. Uh, delighted for that. and Delighted he's staying. Delighted for the fans as well. So from the exciting news of Aubameyang to the sad news, really, that Emi Martinez has now gone. That has been confirmed. His move to Aston Villa, £20 million, has been confirmed. Again, I've seen a lot of bit of criticism. People, fans seem to be 50-50 split for this. But for me, I think it's a, it's a move Arsenal really needed to do. I do think Martinez is a top goalkeeper. And if, he'd, if, they'd, have sold Emi, if they'd have sold Leno this summer and kept um, Emi, I'd have had no problems with that as well. I mean, in a way, I actually think that, um, Martinez is a, better, is a better goalkeeper of what we've seen so far. But you've got to remember, Emi's still only done it over a handful of games, really handful of appearances and Leno's got the longevity and if Arteta and the goalkeeping coaches are making this decision then you've got to trust them for me and for Arsenal it's a fantastic deal. If Leno hadn't got injured at Brighton a few months ago, if Morpé hadn't shoved him and Leno hadn't hurt his knee, Martinez would have gone this summer for a couple of million pounds really but instead it was a real sliding doors moment, instead he stays, he gets his chance, he takes it, he becomes an FA Cup hero, he gets loved by the fans and he goes for 20 million pounds. You know, it's a real sliding doors moment and um, he's ready. He's ready to be first choice and I can understand his desire to go and be first choice somewhere. He wants to play for Argentina as well. He wants to make himself first choice there. So I can completely understand he, his wanting to go and to do that if he couldn't get the assurances at Arsenal and he couldn't. Arteta couldn't give him those assurances. So um, as sad as it is to see Emi go and I know Emi pretty well and he's a, he's a really nice guy and he, he deserves this and he wants this. He's ready for it. And um, I think he's a, I think he's going to be a fantastic goalkeeper for Aston Villa. I don't think he's going to be there for very long, I have to admit. I wouldn't be surprised if Emi goes on and gets a very big move in the next couple of years. And good luck to him because he's, he's a top guy and he's been a top guy for Arsenal. And he's worked so long and so hard to get his opportunity, which he finally got last season. And he took. So what now for Arsenal? Well, they're not going to have to wait too long in terms of bringing in another goalkeeper. Renard Renos, and fantastic name, is, is pretty close to joining now. Not going to be an expensive one. You're looking at around £1.8 million to potentially £2 million for Renard. And he's 25 years old and an Icelandic goalkeeper playing for Dijon in France. Um, um, Arsenal's goalkeeping coach, Naki Kana, knows him very, very well. Has worked with him before. And um, for me, I think that's a that's a good deal for Arsenal. Arsenal do like David Raya in uh, goalkeeper at Brentford. Raya is very keen on a move to Arsenal as well. Whether that happens this summer, I, I'm not so sure. I just think the finance involved make it pretty hard for Arsenal because they've just shelled out, they've just got the money in for Emmy. But for me, that money needs to be spent elsewhere in midfield and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But um, so it doesn't make sense to because Brentford aren't, don't want to sell Ray. It's going to take a lot of money to get him out of Brentford, and it doesn't really make much sense to sell Emmy and then spend a similar amount of money bringing in Raya to sit on the bench. Um, it makes a lot more sense to spend a small amount of money on someone like Renarsson. Look, he needs to be good. He needs to be able to, if needed, to step up and do the sort of job that Emmy did last season. So you don't want to be too signing anyone and spend it and buying some cheap goalkeeper who proves to be not good enough. So you've got to hope that the scouting. And Renarsson's uh, recommendation, uh, sorry, Inaki Kano's recommendation is good enough and he, he proves to be a good signing for Arsenal. But it does make more sense to me for that one. But you've got to keep an eye on the rare situation. I still wouldn't be surprised if something, if Arsenal do attempt to do something with him, but a lot of it depends on Brentford and the money that they're asking. So the rest of the transfer window now, money's in for Martinez. Very good. That's the first big sale Arsenal have made this window. Obviously, Mkhitaryan's gone. They've got the wages off the wage bill for him, which will be about £10 million saving or just underneath. But they didn't get any transfer fee. So Martinez is the first big transfer fee received by Arsenal this window. They don't want it to be the last. They want to get other players out the door now. You're looking at Torreira. You know, a move back to Italy is very, very real prospect. He wasn't involved against Fulham at the weekend. Arsenal got too many players in this squad. They need to make the squad smaller. Guendouzi, I know, is back. Still absolutely wouldn't rule him out of being a, um, if Arsenal can get him out before the transfer window shuts, they will try and do that. Um, Lucas Torreira, as I said, very, very keen on a return to Italy. Italian teams, very, Italian clubs, very keen on him. It's just about whether Arsenal can get the right deal from someone Torino interested, um, Fiorentina interested, Milan were interested, doesn't look like that interest is, uh, is stuck around. So, um, we'll have to wait and see what Arsenal can do. But also Socrates, Mustafi, you know, there are players that Arsenal really want to get out uh, before the transfer window closes, not just to 
reduce the wage bill, not just to reduce the numbers in the squad, but also to bring in transfer fees to focus on those midfield priorities that they really want to do in the transfer window between now and October 6th when the window's shut. I'm not going to spend too long talking about them because nothing's really changed. I have to say, Thomas Party, you know, we've gone over it a long, long, uh, so many times on these videos. I can't, there's nothing more to say really. Atletico want the want the release clause. Arsenal so far reluctant to pay that release clause, unable to pay that release clause. And nothing's really changed in that regard. Husimawa, a player Arsenal want, um, would make a big difference for Arsenal. Um, I think it'd be a fantastic signing for Arsenal. They've talked to Leon about it, but as Janino on the record, the sporting director at Leon said, that offer involved Matteo Guendouzi. Leon didn't want Matteo Guendouzi. They want cash. They want about 60 million euros for Awa. At the moment, Arsenal don't have that money. So it's all about trying to raise some funds, it's, uh, trying to raise some funds in this window and trying to get deals done over the next few weeks. So lots and lots of work still to do in this transfer window for Arsenal. It's not over by any means yet. Still, still going to be in, still going to be out. So I think just going to have to wait and see what how things unfold over the next coming weeks, coming up to October the 6th. That's about it for this one, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. Like I said at the beginning, I am doing a Q&A, uh, or I'm going to try and do a Q&A in the next um, couple, of, uh, couple of days. So please do head over to my Twitter, as I said. The tweet's there. Reply to it with your question or your comment or your opinion on all things Arsenal, and I'll try my best to get you included. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Please do enjoy your day, and I'll uh, be back soon.